Hello boys and girls, welcome to our Sabbath school lesson for this new quarter. I am Sister King. Well, every quarter has 13 Sabbaths, so we are in a new quarter and this is our first Sabbath. So get ready for some exciting new lessons. What lesson are we on again? Yes, you are listening. It's lesson number one. Are you ready for lesson number one? Great. What is the name of the lesson? It's called Lucifer's War. Excellent. Yes, yes, I know that this lesson is very exciting and you want to get started. But before we continue, we have to ask the Lord's blessings. And to do that for us is Nikwan Thomas. Nikwan? Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us safely to Sabbath school for this day. Thank you for keeping us safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Amen. Thank you, Nikwan, for praying for us. We are so happy that you have joined us today. And to show you how happy we are, Ariel Pear will help me to give you a nice, big, warm welcome. Welcome to our Sabbath School lesson. Today's topic is called Lucifer's War. And it is very exciting. Special welcome to our first time viewers. Welcome to you, you and you. May your hearts be blessed. Welcome one and welcome all. Fabulous, Ariel. You did great. Very good. Now, turn to your neighbor and say, welcome. Welcome. Great. What is our lesson study about? The Bible lesson explores the beginnings of the great controversy between God and Satan. It reveals the ambitions of Lucifer to be like God and the consequences of Satan's rebellion to himself and his followers. God's grace is revealed to be the answer to the false accusation that Lucifer made against God by revealing God's character as love. God's grace is his loving, undeserved actions towards his creations. Lucifer did not deserve forgiveness, yet God offered it. The human family does not deserve God's forgiveness, yet God offers it. God has shown that Satan's charges against him are false. Let us say our PowerPoint and our power text together, after which we will go straight into our praise and worship. Our PowerPoint is God's law of love exposes Satan's lies. Our power text is, And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished, he punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. It's praise time. Let us now sing to the glory of God.
across this land That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven We want to see, we want to see We want to see Jesus lifted high We want to see, we want to see We want to see Jesus lifted high We wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. Step by step, we're moving forward, little by little, taking ground. Every prayer of powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. Yeah. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high.
is our God. Sing with me, oh, great is our God. And all I see, how oh, great, how great is our God. Just Sean, we're going to catch as many contact here as possible, but we're not going to pick up any from the ground, right? So after two, one, two. the wind. One day, a woman went to Francis of Assisi and confessed that she was guilty of spreading malicious gossip. She asked him what she could do to be forgiven. Francis told her to pluck a goose and lay one feather on the doorstep of each person she said malicious things about. The woman went away hurriedly and did as she was instructed. She returned to Francis to ask the next step. He sent her back to gather each feather that she had placed on the doorsteps. But to her horror, she discovered that the feathers had blown all over town. When she returned the second time, Francis said, You may wish to repent and that is good, but you can never recall the words that you have spoken. They have gone on their way doing harm. You have committed a sin for which no amends can be made. Confess your sins to God and ask for His forgiveness, for God is the only one who can forgive you. That story was from the Ten Commandments Learner Book Affirm series. Now, how do you think we felt trying to catch the confetti before they hit the ground? How do you think we felt when so much was remaining on the ground? What does this story remind you of? Yes, Satan's sin and Adam and Eve's sin. And we did feel sad not catching enough of Although God can forgive, what can he not do? You are correct, change the consequences. What does he do instead? Yes, he offers his grace and redemption through the life and death of his son. Now, let us say our power text, Exodus 34, 6 and 7 together. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. God forgives sin by his grace but we all still suffer the consequences of sin. Our power point for this week is God's love of love exposes Satan's lies. It's mission story time! Do you have your mission offering? Remember, our offerings support the work of God around the world and help tell others the story of God's grace to each of us. So, give willingly. From remote tropical islands to the bustling cities of Sydney and Auckland, from thick jungles to traffic-jammed streets, 
Amidst rugged mountains and white sandy beaches, this is the South Pacific Division. This beautiful and vast territory encompasses a variety of people groups and terrain that makes mission work in the region both a challenge and an incredible opportunity. God is doing amazing things in this region of 40 million people. The Adventist Church here counts a membership of more than 500,000 people who worship on Sabbaths in nearly 2,000 churches. More than 80% of the membership lives in Papua New Guinea and the Pacific Islands. In Goroka, Papua New Guinea, or PNG, the Adventist Church operates one of the largest missions in the country. As you drive through the beautiful landscapes in this central region of PNG, it's hard not to notice the many Seventh-day Adventist church signs. Adventists here work hard to grow God's kingdom. Today, some nearby church members gather to celebrate the Sabbath with enthusiasm. They sing joyously in praise and worship. Music is a vital component of worship. Here, many groups and choirs sing songs to prepare the spirit for the preaching of God's Word. After the Pathfinders perform a skit, the pastor brings a message of encouragement to people who face many challenges as Christians here. Among these challenges are tribal beliefs and superstitions, geographical isolation, and language barriers. As the world's most linguistically diverse nation, PNG is home to more than 800 languages. This can be a real Tower of Babel experience for those sharing the gospel. At the end of the service, this community of believers sits in groups as others dig up a pit where food has been cooking. This pit is called a mumu, a traditional Papua New Guinean way of cooking. It's like an oven right in the ground where you put hot stones in the hole, followed by banana leaves and then food. Then the hole is covered with earth and the food cooks overnight. When the food is ready, it's a warm and welcoming experience for all. In the afternoon, many churches in this area host programs. This lively all-day event makes Sabbath a day that the children and adults look forward to. The growth the Adventist Church has experienced in the South Pacific goes back to humble beginnings. In 1891, Seventh-day Adventist Church co-founder Ellen G. White arrived in the South Pacific, virtually pioneering the work here. In the home she named Sunnyside in Kurenbong, Australia, she performed her dual ministry of missionary and writer. Her work in this region built a foundation for the Church's early efforts in the South Pacific. Today, the Adventist Church carries on the early missionary's legacy as it continues to spread the gospel throughout the region. Although there has been significant growth, there are still unreached people groups in hard-to-reach places. Please pray for the missionaries who sacrifice much to serve in the South Pacific Division. Is something we associate with evil. It is not something we associate with heaven. In our lesson today, we are going to learn about a time when there was war in heaven. The war was begun by one being's rebellion and lies about a gracious God. Today, we will learn that God's law of love exposes Satan's lies. Let us listen to the Lesson Study Podcast. Welcome to PowerPoint. Lesson 1. Lucifer's War. When have you done something wrong but been afraid to admit it? How do you feel when you have to admit you were wrong? Is it easy to forgive other people when they make mistakes or lie about you? When Lucifer was in heaven, he rebelled against God and told lies about him. As the angels gathered into the large hall for an important meeting, they learned that Lucifer had gone too far. He had claimed that he should be equal with God. How could he even think such a thing? 
many of the angels wondered. God had called this meeting to address this very serious issue. Silence fell over the audience as God the Father addressed the assembly. Solemnly and with deep sadness in his voice, God revealed to his beloved angels that someone in heaven had chosen to make false accusations against him. The angels were faced with an important decision. They were called to take a stand either on the side of God or on the side of Lucifer. They could choose to remain loyal to God, whose love and faithfulness they had experienced. Otherwise, they would follow Lucifer into rebellion against God. One of the first false claims made by Lucifer was that God's leadership was unfair. Lucifer became jealous that God the Father and God the Son did not include him in some of their counsels. As the highest-ranking angel, Lucifer maintained that he should have a part in decision-making. Furthermore, Lucifer claimed that God was too strict in asking that his angels obey his commands. Lucifer questioned God's authority, saying that the created beings should have complete freedom to do whatever they wanted. Everyone listened intently as Michael began to speak. The loyal angels were waiting with anticipation, trusting that Michael might convince the rebels to repent. Michael reminded the angels that God had provided for all of their needs. Lucifer was the highest ranking angel and had been the closest to God among all the angels. He had seen firsthand that God does not issue unfair commands. The father asked only for obedience in response to his law of love. Living accordingly to the principles of God's law was simply the loving response of the created beings for everything they had received from the father. God's desire was to provide for the well-being of the angels. Yet if they chose not to live according to that law, problems would arise. It was clear that jealousy and pride had been the causes of Lucifer's rebellion. Unhappiness, discontent, and dissatisfaction were the natural consequences of rebellion against God's law of love. God the Son entreated the angels to repent because the Father was gracious and willing to forgive them. God loved them in spite of what they had said and done. All they had to do was repent. Michael reminded the angels that, contrary to Lucifer's claims, they had always been free to decide. By deciding to remain loyal to God and obey His law, they would choose life. Everything good in their lives had come from God. He was the very source of their existence. Real joy, peace, and fulfillment were gifts they had received from the Father, and these were found only in Him. God was not trying to keep any good things from them. His laws were there only to protect them from evil and unhappiness. Yet, God could not force His creations either to follow Him or to keep His gifts. Lucifer and his angels were given many opportunities to accept God's forgiveness and to obey His law of love that was designed for their peace and happiness. But Lucifer couldn't be persuaded. He refused to repent. He chose to stand against God's law of love. Working hard to persuade other angels to follow him, he eventually was able to take one-third of them to war against God's Son. Lucifer and his followers lost the battle and had to leave their heavenly home. God stood at the gateway and watched them go. Oh, how he wanted their peace and happiness. The Father and the Son had a plan in place for the salvation of everyone who would want to escape the life of sin and misery brought about by Lucifer's rebellion. God was willing to pay the greatest price to make sure that no one else would follow Lucifer into rebellion. The Son of God would sacrifice His own life to offer salvation and eternal life to everyone who would believe in Him and accept God's amazing grace. Please read Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 16. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 11 to 19 and Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9 to find evidence of the lies Satan told and the way in which God exposed them. I have four questions for you. They are number one, what are some of the lies Satan told? Two, what action did God take to stop Satan's lies? Three, in what way does grace prove that Satan's charges are false? 
And number four, what was Satan's big lie? There are all kinds of lies that Satan tells us about ourselves. Some examples are, we aren't as good as others, we are not as smart, the things we do are too terrible for God to forgive us. But always remember that God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us say our PowerPoint and our power text again. Our PowerPoint is God's law of love exposes Satan's lies. Our power text is and he passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. I would like you to place some beans in a jar filled with cotton balls and sprinkled with water. Moisten the cotton every day until the bean begins to sprout. Then show your sprouted bean to someone and explain how God's grace can take something dry and hard and turn it into something alive, green and growing. In the same way, he can take the sin and evil that have resulted from Satan's rebellion and lies and through his forgiveness and grace, bring new life into the hearts and lives of anyone who will accept him. Well, juniors, we are at the end of our Sabbath school lesson for this week. I had a fun time. How about you? Let us recap. What is the name of this week's lesson study? Yes, Lucifer's War. What is the PowerPoint? God's law of love exposes Satan's lies. And our power text? Our power text is, and he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Coming up next week, Job is tested. God always loves us. Let us now sing our closing song. For he has shown thee, O oh man, what is good and his right plan. What the Lord does require, let this be our desire to do justly. Right 
for the closing prayer. Dear loving Lord, we thank you for being such a kind and compassionate Father towards us, being so slow to anger and forgiving us of our sins. Dear Lord, I thank you for loving us and being so faithful towards us. Please be with every boy and girl bowing before you. Please help them to realize that no matter what they do, that they can come to you at any time and any place and talk to you there, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Please be with the boys and girls and protect them throughout this coming week. Provide for their every need, I ask, with thanksgiving. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Bye, boys and girls. Keep shining for Jesus. Remember, God will never ever leave you nor forsake you. Jesus loves you. <laughs>